Italy, this beautiful country in Europe's south, famous for its tourism, a place many tourists like to visit. Little detour. Back in action, I was just at the Questura. Every province in Italy has one of these. It's basically a police headquarters. It's where you get things done, like getting a passport. Now for Italy, famous around the world, has many iconic symbols, but what are the big ones? Is it the pizza, the Ferrari, Michelangelo, or something completely different? that video I put up on Instagram the other day with me and my sister taking a Vespa trip. Would you say the Vespa is the most iconic symbol of Italy? It's boom after the Second World War. Form and fashion often at times over function. The Vespa, curves sexy, sounds hypnotizing, the two-stroke smoke intoxicating. What's not to love? Some history, here in Florence, the Piaggio company registered the trademark for the Vespa in 1946, over 50 years ago. Piaggio, the parent company of Vespa, has its plant still just down the road in Ponte Dera near Pisa. That plant started pushing out the Vespas in the post-war era. Italy needed something cheap, reliable, something to navigate its bombed, shelled out roads here in Tuscany and all around the Bel Paese. Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn certainly helped the cells in the 1950s with their film Roman Holiday. By the 1960s, the Vespa had been established. Everything that encapsulated Italy was in the Vespa for their owners. Freedom, fashion, design, mobility, it was all there in the Vespa. The Vespa had the GS150, so cool. It had the Rowley, the VBA, those small frame Vespas, the Special 50, the Primavera, and then later on the massively popular P200. Okay, history lesson is almost over. The Vespa from 1946 till today going strong and it's still alive and kicking 50cc models all the way up to the 300cc model, the GTS, a beautiful big beast. It's done away with the manual gears, the kickstart, and the two-stroke smoke, but still maintains those same sexy curves. Now Vespa exists all around the world. You can see those vintage Vespas in countries like Asia, the United States, those clubs, the Vespa clubs help keep the dream alive that Piaggio, Enrico Piaggio started way back in the post-war days. In Italy, those modern lifeless motorcycles rule the street, but tucked in among those motorbikes are millions of Vespas, the historic and vintage Vespas, but also these cool modern Vespas that are still going around. Okay, so that's the Vespa story. Now do you want to hear mine? La cosa più iconic di Italia. La pizza, pasta, Ferrari, la moca, eh. la macchinetta del caffè e per Firenze il lapre d'olio. That was Simone, he runs a little sandwich shop there. So he basically said, famous in Florence, the Lampredotto. He mentioned one thing, the mocha, that little small coffee maker, the famous design. It's a beautiful design, aluminum. It looks like something straight from the 1950s and it still exists today, sold in all the supermarkets. So for him, of course it's Lampredotto, the guy selling Lampredotto. And I did a video on that last week. Check it out. Look at this, another Vespa right down there. These things are everywhere in Italy. My first motorcycle, a scooter, was a Honda Spree. I had that when I was young, loved it. Zoomed all around the neighborhood. I think I was about 16 years old. I let my friend drive it once, he wrecked it. I forgave him. Then, when I moved to California, I bought my first Vespa from this guy in Los Angeles. I think I maybe found him on Craigslist or something. It was a beat up P200 
P200, I think it was a 1978 or 1980 model, red and white. That thing was a wreck, but you could park it everywhere, leave it on the corner. You wouldn't have to worry someone was gonna steal it. I had the most fun with that Vespa. And for those of you who don't know, the shifting on those old Vespas is on the left handlebar. You squeeze it in for the clutch and you go all the way up, one, two, three, four. Some of them have three gears, some of them have four. The neutral's always between first and second. It's a tricky affair, but the Vespa, it's cool, you love it. Then the Vespa 150. This guy, Bob, he had a Vespa shop and he found old Vespa's wrecks in Italy brought them over to California, refurbished them, redid them, put the motors back in, sold them mint looking. I bought a Sprint Veloce 1961, had it painted azzurro, a light blue, kind of like the color of the Italian national soccer team. It looked beautiful. It was fun. I rode that thing all around the hills of California, had so much fun, but I really didn't use it that long because I left it in the United States when I moved to Italy. Then, after a few years in Italy, I got probably the most beautiful of the Vespas that I owned and the most impractical one. It was a VBB. I think when the guy near Milano found it, it was a wreck. It looked like an anchor off of a ship, all rusted out. I think it was red or blue when he found it, but he performed magic, did some body work, redid the motor, a 150 motor, four speeds, and painted it the color that I chose. I didn't go with the original color, I had it painted bronze. The thing was stunning. And when I moved from Lake Como down to Florence, I drove it all the way here. It was a two day trip. I stayed overnight in Parma, I think it was, and I had a lot of fun with that vest. But when my sister came and visited, we made that Chianti trip three days out in the Tuscan hillsides, two nights. We toured all these vineyards, drank wine to the countryside. A lot of fun, my sister on the back, and that was her favorite trip yet. And both of us will remember that time forever. That Vespa was a good one. One time I took it up to Fiesole, the hillside here above Florence. We had dinner up there, a good time. But eventually I saw that I really wasn't using it that much. Between traveling and then coming home and wanting to also have time to ride my bike, I had it in storage and I'd use it maybe once every six months and it really wasn't worth it and I finally sold that Vespa and now I don't even own one. I sold it to a guy that spends his time here between Florence and New York and last I heard he had it painted the original color or one of the original colors of the VBB in that time, blue. What did I learn over the years? I love Vespas and maybe it's better not to own my own Vespa, especially living here in the center of Florence where often if I need to go to the grocery store, I'll walk or ride my bike and they also have share cars here in Florence. So I don't really need a car and I certainly don't need a Vespa because with an old historic Vespa, you have to have a place that's covered, a secure place to park it or they will get damaged or worse, stolen. And also, there are plenty of places that rent Vespas, a lot of them the newer ones, 50cc, 100cc, 150, or even 300cc options. This summer with a friend, I rented a beautiful red Vespa, and we went out into the countryside, hit up some vineyards, drank a little bit of Chianti wine. So that's my story with the Vespa. What's your story? Have you ever rented or owned a motorbike or a Vespa? Let me know.